My friends, how's it going guys? I just want to uh, give you an update. I'm uh, 322 days sober today, which is fantastic. The day's been fan. Uh, the day's been really good. Uh, I can't complain too much. Um, today, when I was at work, I uh, my mind was wandering, and I made a list of the uh, top ten things that got better in my life uh, when once I got sober. So. I would really like to share that with you. Um, so this is my top 10 things that will get better when you stop using your uh, drug of choice. Uh, number one, your respect is going to come back. Um, people don't respect a, a drug addict. They, they just don't. They can't really. Um, you'll find that the respect from your family comes back. You'll find that the respect from your friends, your work. Um, just everything, just, it's all about respect, and you know, people really respect somebody who will put themselves through so much hell to get better. It's a very respectable thing. Uh, the number two thing is going to be, uh, your appetite is going to increase. I know that, uh, with my eating disorder, it was tough because I, I found that um, there was times during uh, a one-week cycle where I might have eaten two meals be because um, when you're drinking as much as I was, you're, you're getting so full from the barley and the hops and all of that stuff that you just lose your appetite. Um, I know that anybody out there who is a drinker can definitely relate to me um, where I was replacing my food with uh, beer. You know, so yeah, I found that right when I stopped drinking, within two days, um, I was feeling like I needed to eat three meals a day. And when I come home from work now, it's the very first thing that I do. So, number two, your appetite's going to increase. Uh, number three, your hygiene and your cleanliness. You know, um, not just uh, not just your your cleanliness of your body, but the cleanliness of your apartment, the cleanliness of your um, bedroom, the cleanliness of your bathroom. You know, everything will get a lot cleaner. You know, when you are in the middle of your addiction and you you just don't care about people and you stop bathing which is crazy to think about. Um, I know anybody here watching me who has a problem with this would know that self-care completely goes out the window. So if, uh, so when, when you're sober, you will stay a lot cleaner. You'll have more motivation to clean your surroundings and, and your house and everything like that. And yeah, things will get cleaner. I decided to um, always stay clean shaven because I feel that it requires a certain level of discipline and I know that if uh, if my face gets scruffy, for example, it's, it's kind of like a warning sign for me to take a step back and to take a breath and to uh, reevaluate things, you know? So that's, that's number three. Number two, number two, number four is your work life is going to improve so much more. When I was in the middle of my drinking, um, I couldn't work an eight hour shift. Uh, I simply could not do it because I couldn't wait that long not to drink. I, it, it, it was impossible for me. Um, even six hour shifts were very difficult for me. Uh, Four-hour shifts for me were, were the absolute norm, and they felt like they felt like they took forever. Um, one thing that I am very proud of is I never went to work drunk. I mean, I never drank before work. I'm sure that there was many times where uh, I had been drinking the night before, and I was probably still legally drunk, but. One thing that I am proud of is I never got loaded and went to work, which is fantastic. So, <clears throat> your work is going to improve 
100%. I'm now regularly working between 35 and 40 hours uh, a week and having eight to nine hour shifts and I can get through them literally with no problem at all. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. Number five is your love life. You know, um, your love life is going to get so much better. Um, people, people that know what you're going through and know what you're battling are going to find your battle incredibly attractive, you know. Uh, I can't tell you the amount of people that I've told, hey listen, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, I'm trying to get better. I haven't heard one single person say that, like, anything negative about it. There's only been support, there's only been constant support, and that 100% goes into your love life as well. You know, um, being able to find a partner, being able to find relationships and maintain those relationships with honesty and respect is something I'm very new to, you know, um, but it's wonderful. It, it's, it's an incredible feeling to uh, be able to have relationships again, and yeah, not to mention your love life gets a lot better too. You can uh, go for a little bit longer, if you know what I mean. Uh, number six, uh, the truth. So, you're finally going to be telling the truth. The problem with addicts is they lie. And they lie non-stop. And, oh, hold on one sec, guys. They lie non-stop. And it's not, they're not intending to. I mean, they're sick. They, they don't know what they're doing. They, they, they don't have the, they're sick. Give them a break. Addict lie. That's, that's part of being an addict. But the greatest part about not being an addict is you stop lying. And you stop lying pretty quickly. And you start, you start giving people your word and meaning. And your word starts to mean something, you know. Um, before, if I were to give somebody my word, they wouldn't even think for a second that I would do it. Um, now, if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, it's going to happen. You know, uh, so being able to tell the truth and being able to remember the truth, you know, there's so many times where I would tell so many stories about nonsense, uh, and then I completely forget them the next day. You know, my, my dad would have to have a talk with me or my girlfriend would break up with me or, or just whatever because of something I did or said last night that I don't remember. You know, it'll get much better, and you'll get the respect from your peers back again. Um, enjoy, and the next thing is that you can finally actually enjoy the little things in life. Uh, something as simple as a cool breeze on a hot day, um, the rain coming in and, and cooling down, uh, cooling down the summer days here, you know, um, the leaves turning colors, the... A, a, a dog walking by your window, you know, you start to really appreciate these little things. Um, I'm a religious man, and I can't tell you the amount of times where I've had to stop myself um, and just look at the, at the beauty of the world, you know, and before, I could never see the beauty of the world at all. When I, when I was drinking, I would come home from work, I would go into my basement, I would turn off all of the lights so I didn't need to see my my nonsense, I didn't need to see my mess, I turned everything off and I sat there with a case of beer and I drank the whole thing and it was a horrible life. I, I, I couldn't ever enjoy anything. So once you stop drinking you can finally start enjoying things. You can finally start getting hobbies. For example, I love video games, and um, there, there'd be times where I would be playing a video game, and after about six or seven beers, you can't play it properly, and then you just can't you can't play anymore. You know, you can't be completely wasted and have the the, the dexterity skills to play video games. You know, now I can actually enjoy them. 
which is wonderful. I can actually enjoy movies without having to go to the lobby five times during the movie and get a beer, you know? Just little things. Little things are wonderful. Um, another one, number nine, I think. Yes, number nine. You actually remember what you did the day before, you know? Um, I remember one time waking up and my, my TV was completely smashed and there was a hole in the wall and um, I must have fallen into it because I'm not in any way a violent guy. I'm not the kind of person that would smash things. I'm the kind of person that would definitely pass out drunk into something, you know? So, um, you'll actually start remembering things and that goes back to your lies too. Um, there's a lot of the time when you're in your, in your addiction You'll tell all these lies and people will believe it and then they'll come up to you and be like, Hey, like, how, is this okay? Is, like, is everything going on with, okay with you? And you say, yeah, no, I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, silly. Um, so being able to remember what you did the night before might sound silly to some people, but to somebody who abused alcohol for 10 years, um... No, you, you don't remember anything. As I said in a previous video, I barely remember anything between the ages of 20 and 30. And I'm 31 right now. And that's pretty crazy. You know, it's a really sad thing. And number 10, the biggest, not the biggest, but a very important aspect is you're going to save money. You're going to save a lot of money. I can't begin to tell, I, I'm talk, I must have spent $120,000 on my, on my addiction, easily, easily must have spent that, and uh, can you imagine the things that I had to do to get that money, you know, uh, it's pretty crazy stuff, you know, I'll open up about that one day, but until now, it's, it is what it is, you know. Um, that being said, that's my list. So if you guys have any suggestions, if you want to add some more uh, into the comment section, if you could tell me some things that you have found have gotten much better being sober, please let me know. Um, I'm, again, re please remember that I'm new, I'm new to YouTube, so if there's any tips that anybody can give me, uh, I would really appreciate that. And that's about it. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by today. And uh, I'll have another video up for you in the next couple days. Thanks so much. God bless. And try your best to stay sober. And if you're not going to stay sober, at least stay safe. Thanks, guys.